Hi, I'm Shadid from Jerusalem. I want to discuss two topics today because I think it's very confusing when you have people from the West trying to understand conversations and the narrative from the Middle East you don't understand what the words mean. In the West, when you say civilian and in international law, when you say civilian, what you're saying is someone who is a regular citizen and is not a part or a member of a military organization. So in Israel, you have civilians and you have people who are soldiers in the idea. The reason terrorists will argue that they're not harming civilians is because in Israel, anytime you have a civilian, well, the civilians eventually go into the army. So they either are before the army or will eventually go to and therefore for them to target women and children is no problem. On the other hand, what you have in places like Gaza, you have a terrorist organization like Hamas, and then you have civilians, as in not members of Hamas. However, these civilians may cooperate, participate, or be super fans of Hamas. They're still considered civilians. So in Israel, they're called uninvolved people. It doesn't mean they're innocent civilians. This is a really difficult moral wrestle that people do like humans, to like humans make live, have to wrestle with. On the other hand, what you have is something like in places like Gaza, you have an organization like Hamas, and then you have the innocent civilians. The problem with that description is that you can be officially a civilian because you're not a member of Hamas. So by international law, you're considered a civilian, but you could be cooperating with Hamas. You could have missiles stored in your house. You could have weapons. You could be the person who jumps in front of the terrorist. Several years ago, they had, um, they were going to take out the home of a known terrorist. And so what the person did, because the the IDF called him and said, hey, we're going to take out your house. He went and called a bunch of civilians from the neighborhood to come and stand on his roof, at which point Israel decided not to take down his house. However, the question that needs to be wrestled through is, at what point your participation with a terrorist organization do you lose your protection as a civilian? This is a really hard thing to wrestle with because most people like humans being alive. When you have a culture that thrives and longs for death and teaches their children to, it's really hard for people who love life to know what to do. So if you have a building that Israel wants to take down and you have parents and they're taking their children and they're going to the top of that building to stop Israel from bombing an empty building that's full of weapons or whatever, what do you do? At what point, if you, know, if you had this happen in Western countries, You'd have the government coming and taking away children from parents who did that to their children. But in Gaza, they're just categorized as innocent civilians. Innocent civilians, parents putting their children in harm's way, putting themselves in harm's way to protect a terrorist organization. At what point do you not get to call yourself an innocent civilian? Because for sure, there are innocent civilians there. How do we tell the difference? And that brings me to the second issue, which is whatever happened to ISIS? What happened to Al-Qaeda? Did they just disappear? They were taken out as an organization for sure. What happened to the ideology? Because we just witnessed it with Hamas. ISIS was supposedly crushed and so was Al-Qaeda. And yet, what we have today is the same ideology popping up in another terrorist organization. How do you take out this ideology? How do you destroy this culture of death? How do you separate the terrorists from the innocent civilian?